Welcome back. So, I came across these listed on eBay, and I remember them being just a complete load of nothing, to put it nicely. But I was kind of wanted to revisit just for nostalgia's sake. So this was put out in, I believe, the late 90s. The Win Raleigh Fingers Stuff Yak Packs. Um, so there's all these different giveaways of um, different experiences and win memorabilia from Raleigh Fingers Collection and yada, yada, yada. Um, the main thing was that uh, you could... The pull rate for autos was 1 in 100 packs. And star cards was 1 in 10 packs. The rest is basically junk wax. Um, junk wax commons. But I figured what the heck. Um, the long packs, so the benefit of that is. And again, none of these cards are going to be significant value, so I just generally cut the top on a bunch of them. This is going to take a little while. This was kind of the, this is the epitome of Trying to cash in on your name, in my opinion. So, you know, basically a company went up to Raleigh Finger and said, Hey, we want to use your name. We want to sell junk wax because there's a lot of it and it's dirt cheap. But if we get your name, we can, you know, put these boxes together. And I think at the time, you know, sell them for like 10, 15 bucks or whatever. Um, or 20, I cannot recall. Um, and we can basically just take people's money because you're going to get not a lot, to put it nicely, out of these packs. And we'll have, you know, kind of insane pull rates and, yeah, we'll throw an auto in there every once in a while. Uh, so, and fingers, uh, you know, as many of his particular era situation they're in, and, you know, a lot of them are making money on signing cards. Um, this is not the big dollar um, baseball when he was playing in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So, it was a source of income, and I can't really blame him. Um, I blame more the Companies that decide to take advantage of these retired players. So basically, I found the best way, and you'll see kind of this stuff coming out. This is more of a, it's a nostalgia rip for me, but it's kind of a cautionary tale for those that may see these, especially any. Um, anybody just getting into the hobby and you, know, you see something where it's like, oh, it's, you know, vintage cards, repacked vintage cards. This should be good. Mm, not really. Because even when you pull a star card, uh, if that star card is from, you know, 90 Fleer, you know, that star card might be worth 25 cents. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and to be fair, I did open three boxes previously. No, four boxes previously. Just for the sake of ripping something. So I don't just go buy something more expensive and just to rip it. You know, buy the cheap stuff, because I pick these up for a few bucks a box. Um, it may have been five bucks. Um, and the cases were six boxes a piece, so I don't even think it was that much. I'm just 
like three or four bucks a box. So, and you'll see, even at that price, I overpaid for this. Um, but again, it's not always about, no, don't get me wrong, most of the time it is about price versus possibility. Um, but it, again, it was more the, hey, I remember this from growing up. I remember even back in the 90s going, what the heck is this? And you know, why are they taking people's money? see a lot of not good stuff pulled out of here <laughs> to say the least I'll put Cecil aside because yeah Cecil is going to be one that you want to put aside when opening this This uh, particular product, a local boy, did not fare well for Raleigh Finger's reputation. Now, theoretically, in one of these two boxes, there should be an auto. As I did open, as I said, four boxes prior to this without anything. Um, there's a couple of nice older stickers of Hall of Fame players. But again, no autos or any of the hits. No Philly boy. As many of you know, I'm in the Philly area, so pulling out Vince Coleman uh, Phillies players isn't necessarily a um, money-wise thing. It's, you know, I can flip them in the area even for a little bit or just throw in this kind of trade fodder. get a lot of repeat in a, any given box and not just of product like of specific cards um, you know we've pulled a 91 mark race I think three times now there's a fourth Larry Christensen but I'll see him on occasion at different uh, events I attend so I yeah, got a couple of them signed Nice stack of those. Six. Galarraga. There's a Hall of Famer. As well as our seventh Larry Christensen, I believe. Eventually, just get rid of them, but it's kind of a reaction. Oh, there's a Sabo. Put that aside. I see Cavillia just kind of react and put them aside, just out of you know remembering the '93 Phillies, Tim Raines. So you've like two Hall of Fame players. That's the stack of commons. Bernie 
Niemiecki. Charlie Hayes run here. Jeffries, there's Dale Murphy. Who eventually might be a Hall of Famer. Jim Sunberg. Baboon. Bamberger. Carlos Garcia and Doc Gooden. Kenny. Shocker. Larry Christensen. Mark Grace again. So that's the breakdown of one box. Giant pile of junk wax. Small pile of junk wax. Let's just kind of divvy these up, shall we? And just look at the most common ones that we found. There's two, two, three, three, four, four, Five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. We get nine Larry Christensen cards, eight Mark Grace cards. Fortunately, these are good one to have signed, so I will put these aside for that specific purpose. But that's the basic breakdown of one box. So we're gonna see if there's anything in the second box and after that, we're just gonna burn them. Now this, this particular product may be the definition of the greed that overtook the hobby in the 90s. And again, now you've seen exactly what has been pulled from one box. And you can see the branding of a you know, Hall of Fame player on the box itself, on the product. careful because you saw what's in these so one doesn't necessarily have to be careful um, opening opening these packs or cutting them uh, anything like that believe me this is the most efficient way because these Packs are not fun to open. I'm just taking the packs to the side and basically going like that to get the cards on one side. Cutting cardboard. Watch that be like the one good card out of it. Oh no, nope, Dwayne Kirby, I'm good. a good card and I cut the corner off of it.
So yeah, this was a great way to tarnish a Hall of Fame career. And it is at least refreshing to see um, Hall of Famers or future Hall of Famers uh, tarnishing their careers in, in a different way. Um, you know, buying baseball teams, trading and selling all their good players, um, which is a shame because they were great players on the field. They just stink off the field. It's almost like some players lose sight of the fact that what you do in your profession, especially as an athlete, to some people, it means a lot. But at the end of the day, your reputation, your name is everything. I mean, I, I don't have any, you know, celebrity... status or accomplishments or anything huge, but I still have my name and I, I'm not going to do anything to tarnish it. Um, that's why I, you know, these videos, I try and stay pretty reserved. I'm not going to, you know, ranting on different things or um, using foul language, which I, you know, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but that's just, I, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, it doesn't speak, you know, it doesn't make me look any, you know, look good at all. And I want to maintain at least, you know, semblance of a, a, a good reputation to the best of my ability. Let to be fair. Don't rip people off with uh, products such as this. Oh darn, things fall on the floor. Yeah, I'm whacking the camera. Eh, it happens. This is just one of those things where I know I still have a lot of work to do on the collection and both in the PC and the inventory of other cards. Um, I just have a lot of stuff piled all around me. Including a few things I had to pick up recently. Um, someone I was hoping that was going to take care of some inventory and, and auction it off, but turns out that they were incapable of processing uh, the cards that I sent them. It's a long story. I'm not going to badmouth anybody, but it was frustrating to say the least. Alright, so let's just see what's in this second box, which I would assume is much of the same. I remember we still haven't gotten an autograph. Of course, odds are nothing but numbers on a wrapper until you actually pull something. Oh, another Sabo, so winning there. Sheesh. Christensen cards. Yikes. 
Ooh, two savers. It's a hot box. Oh, three savers. And protrusion. Uh, Tim Raines. Yeah, a lot of these are just going to be packed up in a bulk box and all. Donate it somewhere. Get some kids some cards. You never know. You know. If a kid likes, you know, particular teams, this is great because, you know, all the teams are there. Um, there's Peter's brother. I'll put him aside. But if you're looking for good cards or even reasonable cards this is not the product that you want to be picking up On the Tim Raines in this box. Kirby again. Getting toward the end. It's Milt Thompson. I think that's his rookie. Not sure. 93 Phillies player. It's all the crud that's in each one of these packs. Concepcion. Right, so this is the final little stack of cards here. David Wells. Which, you know, David Wells is the highlight. Baylor. Herbeck. Adrian Slyke. Another David Wells. So that is the breakdown of two boxes of Raleigh Fingers Yak Pack. 
So it's basically a bunch of junk wax with a stack of you know, nickel and 10 cent cards, um, which are the highlights. Um, everything else is junk, so it's, you know, you know, a penny a card, essentially. Just on volume. So, like I said, I wanted to kind of make it. I remember this product um, growing up. Well, I wasn't really growing up. A little bit older at the time, but I remember this product from years and years ago. And I remembered that it being not good, let's say. And I wanted to see how good my memory was. I was just curious to see really how bad was it. And yeah, I remember it being this bad. So if you see them, just stay away from them. Unless someone's giving them to them, then giving them to you, then yeah. If you wanted just something to rip for free, go for it. But other than that, it's not worth the time or the energy to open up the packs just to pull junk wax out of it. Um, so, but. It gave me something to do, gave me something to rip, so I'm not buying other product. Um, so, ancillary benefit of that. And that's all I got for you this time around. So, until next time, I hope you have a good one. Remember to collect what you enjoy. Enjoy what you collect. And don't let anybody, especially the market or a YouTuber, dictate that to you. Most importantly, have fun. This is a tremendous community with a huge range of people in both perspective, PC, personality. It's a community that will support you in kind of any of the ways you want to participate. So figure that out. Figure out what works for you. Whether it's making videos, watching and commenting, you know, attending live streams, going into group chats, in your LCS, your car, uh, card shows, um, or just talking about the hobby with friends and family. There's a multitude of ways to be an active part of this community. Because once you are, once you put that little bit of effort in, you will get a tremendous amount out. Um, this channel is kind of a testament to that. Because I'm you know, putting a little bit of effort in and I'm getting a tremendous amount of support um, and building friendships with a many, many members of this community. And I am grateful every day for that. So I thank you very much for stopping in. I hope you have a good one. I hope to see you again. And bye for now.